This is the first video in a series of videos that will be covering the programming of the Zometry CNC mill test part. Now this is not meant to be a promotion for Zometry. This is just basically working through a complete component inside of Mashcam, taking into consideration 2D and 3D features, as well as features with tight tolerances and how we can go about programming for those inside of Mastercam. So you get a package of files from Zometry when you start this part, and these are the files that you get. Uh, this first one here is basically some instructions. We won't be reviewing that in today's video, uh, but the rest of them we will be. So these rest of them are, these first two are blueprints, and the second two are solid models. So this is what you would expect from basically any customer uh, that you're doing work for. They should supply you with documentation or solid models for the part you're about to produce. Uh, at the very least, you're going to need a print, and hopefully they provide you with at least a model as well. You know, some model was probably used to generate that print. So to save yourself some uh, some time and to save your customer money, if they gave you the existing model, uh, that's only going to help things out. Now, as far as file types, notice we've got two different file types here for the solid model. We've got a solid part, SLDPRT, and we've got a step file, the .step. So the step file is kind of the uh, generic uh, solid model. It's not It's not associated with any one modeling environment so it should be able to open it in any software that you're using whether that's mastercam solidworks or what other cam or cad package that you may have uh, solidworks obviously opens up in solidworks itself it will open in other softwares as long as you have a translator uh, if you don't have a translator then you're going to be wanting to be using this step file uh, mashcam will open solid parts so that's not an issue here uh, i guess one thing though if a customer or if you're given a choice to the file type that you receive from the customer and you can't open a, a native CAD uh, model, then you're gonna wanna, the most common is to ask for a step. Uh, second in line, I would say ask for a pair solid. Um, I would not use an IGES file there. I've never had great luck with them. So uh, first choice step, second choice pair solid, which is uh, the extension X underscore T or X underscore B. The difference between B and T is just one is a text, uh, to describe it and one is binary to describe it. Uh, so same same file other than that. So let's have a look at these first. Uh, I'm gonna look at the, the drawings here. And the first one is the PDF. And this is the PDF we're given here. Let me just slide this off to the side and I'll open up the SolidWorks drawing that's included as well. Now this here is another common um, occurrence with customer supplied documents is sometimes there's gonna be discrepancies in those documents. So you can see, here, you can see that they are the same part. Uh, they both do say Rev5, you know, Rev5, but there's differences on these prints. Notice the description of the engraving here. Notice the description of the engraving here. And if I zoom in on this lower left corner, notice the numbering. We'll talk about the numbering in a second. And if I do that same thing over here, uh, notice the numbering on these guys. So this dimension here is number 19. Over here, this dimension is number 17. Uh, so what these bubbles are is in the package here, there you're asked to, after you machine this, inspect each dimension. And on the inspection sheet, there's dimension 17 and it's associated with this dimension. So you would machine it and in spot number 17, you would type in or you would fill in what measured value you have for that. So you can see where this can be a bit of a problem if this is referring to this dimension as, you know, slot 17 and this is referring to it as 19. So as you would handle this with any other customer, you'd either in your documentations um, make note of the document you're referring to or, you know, confirm with your uh, customer what document you should be using uh, to make sure you're both on the same page. So I'm going to be working from the PDF just so I don't need to keep SolidWorks open. And basically what we want to focus on here, let me just maximize this print, is we're going to talk about not so much the machining aspect of this, but the programming aspect of this, and especially as it relates to hitting these tighter dimensions here, these tighter tolerance dimensions. Uh, let me just get this back to a fit screen here. Okay, so we notice down on the bottom here, we've got some uh, instructions about dimensions. Uh, dimensions are in inches, so that's uh, good that we're used to working with inches. Tolerances are plus or minus five, unless otherwise noted. Surface finishes are 125 unless otherwise noted. Okay, so basically if, if everything was plus or minus five and everything's had a surface finish callout of 125, programming this part would be pretty straightforward. You could probably just put in a nice new end mill, run finish cuts, um, and you would hit all your sizes. Just rough, 
and then finish finish with the new end mill and you probably wouldn't even need to measure as long as you're using a decent uh, a decent machine not that we would ever machine apart and not measure it uh, but as we get tighter tolerances like this we've got plus or minus one uh, down over here we have a plus zero minus two and we've got a surface finish call out here of 32 and one more tight tolerance right here uh, 0.357 to 0.347 i guess it's not a tight tolerance but at least a different tolerance anyways so a couple features in here that need a little bit more attention than just using a finish tool with the finishing tool path and we'll talk about programming these and how we can you know program to make rerunning these parts between measurements much easier